heart. The heart is a pyramidal muscular pump, which approximately equals the size of a person's closed fist. It is located obliquely in the middle mediastinum, and is seated on the diaphragm. The heart is located between two rigid structures, sternum anteriorly, and the thoracic vertebral column posteriorly. This arrangement helps the heart to be compressed during cardiopulmonary resuscitation, so that blood can be forced out into the circulation in the event the heart has stopped beating. On either sides are the lungs. The heart has a base, apex, anterior, inferior, right, and left surfaces. Its base is posterior and faces the esophagus. From its upper part arises the aorta and pulmonary trunk. The aorta arises from the left ventricle, while the pulmonary trunk arises from the right ventricle. The apex is anterior and faces to the left anterior thoracic cage at the level of the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. At this point, the beating of the heart can be felt, and this is called the apex beat. The anterior surface of the heart is also called the sternocostal surface. It is right behind the sternum and the upper costal cartilages. It is formed mainly by the right atrium and the right ventricle. To its left, one third is the left atrium and left ventricle. The atrial ventricular groove, coronary sulcus, runs obliquely downwards and to the right on this surface, and this separates the atria from the ventricles. Running perpendicular to this, towards the apex, is the anterior interventricular groove. The heart can be considered to be a tube folded on itself with an anterior arterial end and a posterior venous end. Also, the right atrium and right ventricle are anterior and to the left of the corresponding left chambers. Its inferior surface is the diaphragmatic surface. It is mainly formed by the two ventricles. The right border and surface formed by the right atrium. It is closely related to the right lung and pleura. The right border is about a centimeter to the right of the sternum. The superior vena cava and inferior vena cava join the right edge of the right border. The left border extends to the left part of the thoracic cage from the level of the third costal cartilage to the fifth intercostal space. This border and surface is closely related to the left lung. Part of the anterior border of the left lung overlaps the anterior aspect of the heart. This border is formed by the left atrium and the left ventricle. The inferior border is seen below the anterior or sternocostal surface. It is formed by the right ventricle predominantly. The left ventricle forms the left one-third. The pumping action of the heart is due to the specialized cardiac muscle fibers, a type of muscle unique to the heart. These fibers are branched, uninucleate, and with striations, yet involuntary in action. The cardiac muscle is remarkable for its rhythmic contraction, a feature which keeps the heart pumping all the time. Cardiac muscles are attached to the fibrous skeleton of the heart around the four valves. From here, the muscle fibers proceed to a double spiral course in such a way that when contraction occurs, the apex of the heart is pushed upwards and backwards towards the base.
This enables the blood to be forcefully pushed into the aorta and pulmonary trunk during cardiac systole. The electrical activity of the heart can be monitored accurately by an equipment called the electrocardiogram or the ECG. It provides the doctor valuable information about the contraction of the atria and ventricles during systole and diastole. By positioning the leads, different parts of the heart can be monitored for electrical activity. The ECG is an electrical signal consisting of a P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. The P wave is a reflection of atrial activity. The QRS complex and the T wave reflects the ventricular activity.